What's going on guys? So today I want to talk about this zero day in Firefox and I also want to talk about Tails which is this machine's running. This is a tail setup right now on a USB stick. And that one over there is running a Hunix setup on a USB stick as well. Now, you have many options when you run Tor Browser, but I really have been planning to talk about this since this story came out where Firefox Windows users have been exploited by Russian-based attackers who are not only exploiting them using multiple zero days, so a chain of zero days in order to bypass the security features in Firefox to actually install a backdoor on your system. So if you're running Windows and you're running a Firefox browser, be it Firefox, LibreWolf, or even Tor Browser. You are not necessarily safe, so you should always keep Tor Browser upgraded, but the key factor in this video's point is to talk about why you should, in most cases where safety is important, use something like Tails on a USB stick or use something like Hunix, which doesn't have to be on a USB stick. You can run your Hunix right inside VirtualBox as I have covered in previous videos. And I also set it up in the KickSecure setup, so that is, adds hardening to the Debian operating system. So check out my previous videos on that. I'm gonna be talking more about the benefits of KickSecure coming up. Uh, and I've also, am gonna talk a little more about my personal setup. So for example, you know, I've written some additional scripts like YPry, things like that, that you can use if you want optionally to have your Wi-Fi killed when you leave home. So you can have the radios of Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi killed automatically when you leave home if you set up Wi-Fi. And you can set that up on any Linux operating system, including your Linux phones or tablets. So it's not limited just to laptops and desktops. Now, this particular set of zero days was being exploited, as mentioned, in a chain of two different zero days which allowed them to gain remote execution privileges without any user interaction. So just visiting the website with this vulnerability, if they were running Tor Browser on a Windows machine, they'd be exploited and they'd have a backdoor installed on their system. Many places were hit by this. So Ukraine was hit by this. Other uh, Russia adversaries were hit by this. Also financial sectors were hit by this backdoor, the rom-com backdoor. And you can see this little diagram here, it kind of shows the process of how this actually delivered the rom-com backdoor payload. So we can see, you know, just how this attack took place. And then we can also take note that on things like Tails, where you have an amnesic USB stick, you have that benefit where even if it attempted to you know, backdoor you, you're one, you're on a Linux operating system, so it's not gonna affect you anyway. And most people run Windows to this day, which means it is the largest target for attack. So it's automatically gonna be more targeted because it is more used. But even so, if you wanna use Tor more safely, you should decide between either using a Hunix setup, which could be a good option to add to your existing desktop, or, and I covered that in my previous video, installing uh, or converting Debian to Kick Secure and adding Hunix, so I already had covered that, but the benefits are a little different on each, but they have very similar benefits. So you can benefit from it, and even if there were a zero day, you would be protected from various leaks. So because of the fact that Hunix itself runs itself through multiple virtual machines. You got the gateway. So it's basically like a virtual setup of virtual machines in a network. So you have the gateway, which is like a router. It turns into like a Tor router, similar to a hotspot that automatically Torifies all your applications through the Tor network. So it forces everything through Tor. So even if something tried to leak your IP address or your VPN failed, uh, you'd also have the protection of Hunix's gateway workstation setup where everything is force routed through the Tor network. By using the workstation, which is what you're looking at right now, it's the virtual machine that you're actually using on the front of your interface. So that's where you're going to accomplish all your tasks. Now the gateway itself, of course you're going to want to keep that upgraded and you can do that with upgrade dash non root as a command. That is an easy way to upgrade it safely. And you'll note that they both come up as valid Tor browsers. So if I go over here, even though this isn't officially connected to the Tor project, but Tails is, 
this will still say this browser is properly configured to use Tor. Now, if you set up Tor in proxy settings on another browser, it's going to say it hasn't been properly set up. Now, the idea behind Tor and Tor browser, no matter what your setup is, whether it's Tails, whether it's Unix, or your home computer, on whatever operating system. The idea is to make the users look as identical as possible. And that's the whole idea behind the Tor Browser project. Now, when you are using various different browsers, you could also use that to your advantage in some ways, but in most cases, you wanna appear as much the same as other users as possible as little to uniquely fingerprint you as is possible. And that's where Tails makes it very easy to do. Just burn Tails to a USB stick and you're good to go. You can run it, it's meant to be amnesic. So what it does is it doesn't write anything to the hard drive. It completely exists on the USB stick only. And that means that by running in the RAM, so the temporary memory, the random access memory, which is basically everything that's loaded in your system at that given moment is running in the RAM. Well, Tails runs everything in the RAM. Instead of writing to the disk, you can even remove your hard drive, you can remove your SSD. You don't need one. And it could only become a liability if you were using an unsafe machine. But even so, it is anti-forensic because of the fact it only runs in that temporary memory, which only could be potentially you know, pulled for data for a few minutes after the shutdown. Now, if you pull the USB stick out, it's actually gonna wipe that RAM right away. And I'll demonstrate that at the end of the video. So we can actually go through, Hunix has some good documentation on the differences between this. So you can see the difference here. Yes, it has a torifying gateway. So it torifies everything on Hunix over there. And the difference is with Tails, it's using firewall rules to force everything. So there's also protection from leaks in Tails as well. Now, Hunix does go a little further in some ways, but really, if you are a beginner, Tails is the perfect one to start with. Not only that, it's perfect for anyone, really. If you have low system resources or you want to save your battery life, you don't want to run out of battery life from heavy virtual machines, very quickly, well then you might want to use Tails anyway. I use Tails for everything from testing hardware to, you know, I use it on a daily basis. It's an excellent option. It's also right now it's connected to the Tor project. So they've actually kind of merged the project with Tor project. So that's pretty cool. So it's now under the umbrella of the Tor project. Whereas in the past they did have some partnership, but now it is an official, you know, part of the Tor project. So that's an official thing that's always good to see. Now, both are open source, so you have the benefit of inspecting the source code. You can see everything it's going to do, or at least what it's programmed to do. And so there's a lot of different options there. You can even set up, you know, potentially have your Hunix run as a live boot. You can have that with something called Grub-Live. Now, you could install Hunix on anything you want, but I personally recommend checking out my previous video. I talk about installing it on KickSecure. So if you want to do that, you can do that. Then you can add YPry, some of the other projects that I've, I've also done videos on that as well. So I might go over more of my details of my setup and uh, talk about that. So this is why you should be using either Tails or Hunix to protect yourself anytime you're using the Tor network, especially when your safety is at risk. I want to finish up and just give some general advice. So if you're in an area where you believe forensics are going to be your enemy, you're going to use probably tails. If you need to save battery life, you're going to probably want to use tails. If you have a low performing computer, you're probably going to want to try tails. See, tails is very versatile, can run on various systems. Hunix, on the other hand, you need more virtualization options in your hardware. You also need more RAM requirements. You also have, you know, the option to install it on any operating system inside the virtual box, similar to how I shared how to do that in the actual KickSecure setup. Now, 
There's also protection in Tails from cold boot attacks. Because Tails runs purely in the RAM, that means that anything that you're running in the system at any given moment, the entire setup, is going to be running in the RAM. And the more recent something is, the more easy it will be to extract that information, potentially even keys from the RAM. Now with a cold boot attack, somebody may try to actually freeze the RAM and actually try to recover forensically that data. So Tails has excellent anti-forensic options. Now when I pull out this USB stick, as I'm about to do right now, it's actually overwriting the RAM right now with random data. So you can actually see that happening. And usually it scrolls down a bunch and talks about errors with reading the file system because what it's doing is actually overwriting that RAM with random data. Now for Hunix, Hunix is an awesome option as well. Now this is something I more so recommend as a permanent type setup on something where say you have your Linux operating system and you need some additional protection from things like those zero days. Well, you may want to use Hunix on your main system. Um, we can also take a look at some of these attacks as well that are proven to have been stopped by using something like Hunix. Now you can also use Tails for many of the same, uh, but there is some advantage to Hunix, including things like hardware identifiers that, you know, using this virtual machine setup, it has various other protections that Tails may not have. So they're two different separate projects, and it's really up to you which one you wanna try. I personally recommend both. I use them in different situations. If I'm being more portable, I'm gonna use a Tails USB stick because it saves me the battery life, saves me the performance. If I have something that I just want to have ready to go at any time inside my existing setup, well then I'm gonna use Hunix for that. We can take a look and see some of the attacks that actually can be protected. So with IP leaks, that is something that a lot of people are concerned about with Tor browser or any kind of torification of your browser because simple proxy settings can leak things. So that's something to keep in mind that there's various ways applications can potentially leak, including simple things like DNS settings. So if you have something like Pigeon, which is a messenger program, and a lot of people used Pigeon. I actually used it for quite a few years as well myself. Now, there was a bug that was found in Pigeon that would have leaked the real IP address. Now, the thing is, Hunix didn't exist when this happened, but it could have been stopped if Hunix was being ran. Even things like BitTorrent, there's also, you know, the ability to, the fact that the IP address leaks in 2010 that it mentions here, that were reported when using just ordinary proxy settings. Now, many people don't even know that you need to make sure you're also torifying your DNS requests because anytime you're using something that is using an application of various protocols, you know, if you're using other protocols outside, you know, SOX, then you're going to be concerned about different types of leaks as well if you're not using something like Hunix or Tails. So because of the fact that if you're only force routing everything through Tor, now if there's other connections through UDP and other things, uh, you could be leaking vital fingerprint information. Now, pretty nice to use either one really, uh, but as mentioned, I use Tails a lot just because of the fact that it's more lightweight, uh, but I also really have a great appreciation for Hunix. It's an excellent project. They've done a lot of great work, especially with sharing the hardening for Kick Secure, so you can convert your own Debian operating system into a more hardened setup. And then you can add your Hunix setup on there, so there's additional protections. If somehow the virtual machine were escaped, you have additional sandboxing protections in the Kick Secure setup. And I'll be covering more on my setup there and some of my recommendations there and some of the documentation as well. So make sure to share the video guys. You know, these videos don't get well promoted. I know it's a niche topic that I cover, but you know, it's something that I believe in. So I really appreciate all your support. If you want to donate to the channel, you can do that at bmc.link slash tech. And there's ways you can support with a coffee or, you know, help support the hardware fund so I can continue sharing new and exciting hardware. Uh, or you can even join as a member and there's additional posts. And sometimes I do, you know, private, you know, talks as well on the members content. So thank you guys so much for your support sharing this video leave a comment let me know what you think and i'll be back later with more on how to protect your security 
and privacy.